Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready for the day while testing out some of my new Sephora purchases. As I'm sure you can tell by the sound of my voice, I'm not feeling 100% healthy, but it's okay, we're gonna power through. This is the savings event and we have limited time and I wanna make sure I can properly review these products before the end of the sale. I'm starting with my new Dior Forever Glow Star Filter in shade three. I'm really excited about this. I have seen quite a few reviews, but I have not tried this on the face yet. And it is meant to be similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I did about two pumps on the back of my hand and I'm gonna use this as an illuminating primer. And from what I've seen, it has a lot of pigment to it. So it should mix in really nicely to any foundations. You might even be able to use this as a skin perfecter or maybe a light skin tint. I don't think it would completely replace your foundation just because then you might be a little bit too shiny, but I don't know, you might really like a very glowy base, in which case it probably could. I'm tempted to pick this up in a darker shade, either 4.5 or 5, and use it as a cream or liquid bronzer. So I really wanna test this out. So far I have successfully resisted the urge to do any more damage at Sephora. With the exception of one Gisu lip gloss that they didn't have in store whenever I went the first day. So I did pick that up, but other than that, I have not done any more shopping. So far we are looking very glowy overall, which is what we expected. I really like it. It's actually much closer to the Hollywood Flawless filter than I thought it was going to be. In other reviews, I guess the other reviews I watched, they compared the products side by side. Maybe then I would see a big difference, but right now it looks basically the same. Just the Dior version. I do really like it. I think on a very clear skin day, which I do have a couple small blemishes on my chin, but if my skin was completely clear, I could probably use a little bit of this star filter and then go in with just a little concealer, a little powder and finish my makeup. And this could be a very glowy, very summery, natural makeup look. I wanted to make sure to set this up for success, so I'm pairing it today with my Holy Grail foundation. This is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I wear shade 6.5. This has been sitting in the top drawer and I'm probably halfway done with it. I'm going to hold out. I'm not going to replace it right away because I have too many foundations in my drawers, so I'll probably just wait until the holiday savings event to restock this foundation. But And you really don't need that much. I'm just going in with one pump of the foundation. And I think because we went in with the star filter, this will be perfect. It will give us just enough coverage and a lot of luminosity. Oh my gosh, my poor voice. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me okay and I don't sound like I'm struggling too much because I am. I only had the chance to post a few Instagram stories last week, but we went to Orlando for a couple days to spend time with my husband's family who all flew over from England for their big spring vacation. So it was his two brothers, their wives, all of their kids, his dad, his dad's girlfriend, Shelly. I think there were 14 of us and then my parents even joined us for a day. So it was a big group of 16 of us in Orlando and we did the parks one after another. We started with Magic Kingdom, we did Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and Universal Islands of Adventure. We had so much fun. It was such a busy, hectic week. Every day was jam packed from early in the morning to late at night. And then we made it back just in time for the start of the savings event. Of course, my voice started to go from all of the screaming, riding the roller coasters. With all of the running around, my immune system finally just gave up on me. So now I'm in recovery mode. This hourglass foundation is pretty matte. It's a soft matte finish, but I can absolutely see the glow shining from within. And that comes from the Dior Star Filter. So I think this is gonna be a really nice combination. Before I finish the face, I'm gonna skip ahead to the eyes. I have two Prada eyeshadow palettes. I haven't used either of these on camera before. I've used this one for a campaign. This was sent to me from Sephora Squad. This is the shade Pulp. It's 06. Really pretty rose gold blush tones. The perfect everyday eyeshadow palette. But because I loved this one so much, I actually purchased 05. This is the blue 
05 Pure. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pop this one out and then I'm gonna pop in the other shade. Let's see, so they're refillable. Ooh, that was pretty easy actually. Okay, so this pops right out. And then we're gonna test this one first. Of course, I will show you an eye look using that other palette, it's so pretty. But I was enchanted by this really pretty blue right here. And that's why I wanted to go ahead and pick this one up on sale. What I've just discovered is that this little piece of tape back here, this little sticky bit, is what holds the palette into the compact. I don't want to remove that just yet because I think between the two color stories that I have, I will most likely use this one more. So I'll probably pop this one right back in whenever I'm done with this. Although I'm not sure. Who knows, maybe if I really like this makeup look, I'll go with this palette instead, but I do think it's better to do one at a time versus swapping them in and out. It's not held in by a magnet, it's just a little sticky piece in the back. I do really like the outer packaging. This refillable compact feels really heavy weighted. It shows fingerprints really easily, but it has the mixed metals, which I think looks very chic. So this is the color story we're working with today. Very quickly, I dusted a little powder on my eyelids just to set everything in place, and then I picked up a Sephora Pro 26 brush. This is one of my favorite fluffy brushes, and I'm going into this center brown shade. This is going to be our crease color. Very slowly, I'm gonna start building up that color in the outer crease, and you can see pretty pigmented. One thing I was able to accomplish over the weekend, as well as unpacking everything, before I started to feel sick, I cleaned all of my makeup brushes. I'm really proud of myself. Usually it takes me a couple hours because I wait until they're all filthy to clean them. But today I am working with all fresh and clean brushes. For the face, I'm using some new Real Techniques brushes, but for the eyes, I'm using all Sephora Collection Pro brushes. These are some of my favorites. And one of the best deals I think you can pick up during the savings event. I didn't think I picked up that much eyeshadow originally, but without going in for more product, I'm just gonna keep blending up and just blending that out. I guess the center shade in this palette is much darker than this one. With this center shade, I did have to build it up a little bit with this one because it's more of a medium intensity brown. You really don't need to build up the color. It just starts pretty pigmented. And then the same exact thing on the other side, just going in the crease with that first shadow. I would compare the Prada eyeshadow palettes to the Dior eyeshadow palettes. If you're a big fan of Dior eyeshadows and Chanel eyeshadows, I think you will love the Prada eyeshadows. Next, I'm going in with a Pro Crease 19 brush and I'm picking up the deeper shade at the top and this is going in the outer V, just to add a little depth. These colors seem to be more intense than the original palette I tried. I actually think I might end up liking the blue palette better than the original rose gold, which I already really liked. Or maybe this will be more of an evening palette and the other one will be more appropriate for daytime, I'm not sure. I really love the color payoff. I love how easy they are to blend. So far, both of the browns are leaning very warm. So I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna integrate the blue just yet. Originally, I was inspired to pick this up because the blue eyeshadow palette from Chanel sold out so quickly, the Ravage palette and I was kind of hoping to be able to mimic the same look using this blue, so we'll see. I might have to try that recreation another day. With a Sephora Pro 15 brush, I'm gonna pick up the gold shade right here and I'm gonna start popping this on the lid. Ooh, I love that. I wasn't sure if it would go on really nicely with the brush. In the other palette, I just used my fingers, but actually this works really easily. The gold is nice and creamy. I also picked up two really pretty loose pigments from Give Beauty. I might apply a little bit of the gold on top of this just to see what it looks like and to try as many products as possible, but this by itself I think is really stunning. 
Part of me wishes this top shade up here was a little bit more of a cool chocolatey brown. Right now I think it's translating very warm. Not terrible, but because this shade is so warm, I feel like this would have been better off being really cool. Now the only thing I'm not sure of is how to integrate this really pretty blue. The blue is so vibrant. With the Chanel Blue eyeshadow palette, I was popping the blue right in the center of the eyelid, and I thought the look turned out really nice. Maybe I'll try it. Should we try it? Who cares if I mess it up? Okay, let me just see. Ooh. I kind of like it. I'm going to keep adding this blue, and then I still think I'm going to go on top with the sparkly pigment. And I'm sure there are so many other ways, probably so many better ways to integrate the blue, but I kind of like just a little blue right above the iris. This is such a fun summery color story. I'm excited to keep playing around with looks. But for a first time experimenting, it's not terrible. This is the Give Beauty Icy and Sparkle Multi-Dimensional Eye Pigment in the shade Glimmer. This is the gold. And because we're just going with the flow today, I'm going to pop a little bit of this right on top of the blue. My hope is that because it's a little bit sheer and I'm just going to use my finger, that it's going to help blend the blue with the gold so it's more of a subtle pop of blue, not as intense. This gold is so stunning. I love those Give Beauty shimmers. They're so pretty. And now I have every single shade. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, see, this is exactly what I was hoping for. <gasps> I love it. It definitely tones down the blue a lot. But I think it makes it a bit more wearable. I think you could also use the blue on the inner corner. You could use it below the lower lash line. There are many ways to incorporate a pop of color. I really love all four shades in this palette. I really love the loose pigment shimmer, the sparkle on top. Now that we've done what we did on the lid, I probably wouldn't have gone in with this deeper color. I think just a little gold and a little blue would have probably been perfect. I think you could probably survive with just three. these three down here would look really pretty. And then maybe if you're not going to use the blue at all, that's when you go in with this top shade. I've only used this new Guerlain Terracotta Concealer a handful of times, so we're going to use this today. And I purchased shade 0N. I really like it so far. I think I actually like this Terracotta Concealer a bit more than the Terracotta Foundation. Which is still good, but maybe not an all-time favorite. When we were in Orlando last week, I didn't have time to vlog or share my makeup for the day, anything like that. It was way too busy, but I was testing out a bunch of my favorite tinted SPFs. There's a few more that I want to try, but I'll probably do a roundup of my favorites because even I was surprised by the result, but I knew I was going to be outside all day exposed to the elements, so I figured I should at least test out a few products, and I found some new favorites. I really want to try the new tinted SPF from Supergoop since that's a sunscreen brand that I love, but it's sold out on Sephora.com, so maybe I missed it, although I need to try Kohl's. Sephora at Kohl's sometimes carries products that are already sold out at Sephora, and I need to check in store at my local Sephora's. We have so many Sephora's in the Miami area. I feel like I should be able to find it somewhere. But it has, I think, five star reviews already. So I really want to test it out. See how it compares to my current favorite. If you're planning to spend the day at Disney anytime soon, I definitely would recommend going with a tinted SPF versus a foundation and wear a hat so your scalp doesn't get sunburned like mine because right now, it's white, itchy, and peely, and I have flakes everywhere because my poor little scalp got sunburned. I was so prepared. I had all of the sunscreen in the world, but I forgot a hat. This brush is amazing, by the way. This is the Real Techniques 453. Really fast and easy for concealer. 
I love it. I have two new blushes to try. I'm not sure which one to try today. I think they'll probably give a very similar appearance. This is the Dior Forever Glow Maximizer in shade Rosy. And then I picked up the, this is the Luminous Powder Blush from Rare Beauty in the shade Happy. Both are really pretty. I think today, since we started with the Dior, we'll just stick with Dior. This reminds me so much of the Pink Gasm Blush from Charlotte Tilbury. Poor Charlotte, getting knocked off left and right. Start with two dots. And for this, I'm going to use this Real Techniques 099 brush. Just lightly tap that out. So pretty. I love the glow with just a hint of pink. It looks very fresh, very spring, summer. Ooh, I like that a lot. As much as I love this, and I do, I think it's really pretty, I would have to compare them side by side. I think I might actually like the Pink Gasm from Charlotte Tilbury a little bit more. I don't know why, maybe it's a little bit more pink. I just feel like every time I use the Pink Gasm blush wand, my makeup is beautiful. I feel like it's the best makeup day ever whenever I use that. Maybe I need to finish my makeup before I judge, but this is giving me pretty, but not, oh my goodness, I love my makeup so much today. It's a lot more subtle than I thought it was going to be. I could probably throw a little bit of the Rare Beauty blush on top of this at the end, just to give it a little bit more life. It's so pink, but then as soon as you blend it out, it becomes very, very natural. So if you like a very natural blush, I think this is perfect. But it really is more of a highlighter, I guess. Like, I feel like this cheek looks nice and glowy, but not necessarily blushing. Next, I'm gonna warm up my complexion using the Say Beauty Sun Melt Cream Bronzer. I am so close to being done. Although, I probably have a couple months left just because there's so much product in here and you don't need much, but I have hit pan and I'm really excited for the day I can throw this in the empties bin. I do really like it. I would say it's comparable to the Chanel Cream Bronzer. This is shade Light Bronze. I really like the shade. If you're looking for a cream bronzer or if you're in the market for a cream bronzer, I would recommend the Say Beauty from Sephora. It's really nice. And this is the Real Techniques 084 brush. It's the perfect shape for cream bronzer. It blends everything really nicely, but it's kind of the perfect contour shape if you really want to chisel out your cheeks. You have to share with me if there's anything really good and exciting that you picked up so far from the savings event. Anything that you've tried that has blown you away that you highly recommend, please drop it in the comments. Not that I'm looking to be tempted, but I may end up making one last purchase and then I'm going on another strict no buy. I'd say my most recent Sephora haul was probably one of my better savings event hauls, just because in my drawers, there are a few products that I purchased last spring. I guess it must've been last holiday, maybe the spring before that I don't really love. I don't really use like the House Labs foundation. I picked that up because it was really popular. I don't ever grab that foundation. The Gucci concealer had rave reviews. I picked it up on sale. I don't even know where it is and have no desire to find it because I liked it, but didn't really rock my world the way I was expecting it to. So sometimes you pick things up and they're just so-so. I haven't even looked at fragrances yet, but I really want to try the new Forever Mood fragrances. So that will probably be the last and final thing I look at. I'm going to set my concealer with the Givenchy Prism Lead Powder. This was, I think, a limited edition top. You can use the cap from any of their limited edition powders on all of their powders. So this sparkly cap I held on to, but it's basically just the same rose powder. Number three, Voile Rosé. I think they still make this one. I really like the Givenchy Loose Powders, and this is the Real Techniques 402 brush. 
I really like this one. This one I've been using quite a bit. The other ones are very new to me, but this one I love because it's fluffy, but it's really small for getting the concealer area. So I know by the time this video is posted, the eclipse will be old news, but did anybody have a good sighting of the eclipse? I was a little bit disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. I kept watching the clock, trying to figure out what time would be the best time to go outside and see it. I didn't have the special glasses, but I was using my phone. And I think in Miami, we just didn't really have great visibility of the eclipse, maybe 10%, because I did not see anything. It looked exactly the same. Just a normal sunny day in South Florida. But I did see a couple videos from Texas that were incredible. They got the best view. They were in the path of totality. And I think some people in the Northeast also had a great view. But the videos out of Dallas were amazing. I'm so jealous. Of course, everyone on the news was talking about the eclipse during the lead up, saying how people were traveling and they were booking Airbnbs. And I thought to myself, that's nuts. Who's traveling just to see the eclipse? But then when I was really disappointed yesterday trying to see it, I thought this is why people travel. And it is kind of a cool once in a lifetime thing if you're lucky enough to get really great weather and great visibility. So I might have to mark my calendar 20 years from now or whenever the next one is. That one I will travel for. I feel like my cheeks need a little something something so I am gonna tap on a little bit of this Rare Beauty blush in the shade Happy. I think I'm gonna love this. This might be my favorite thing that I picked up from the savings event. It's just the perfect color. And I do think the sheen is just enough. It's not too much luminosity. And it gives you that very pretty, happy, fairy princess cheek. I love it. I was trying to convince myself earlier that if I just did my makeup for the day, I would start to feel better and I could somehow trick my body into getting healthy again. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case. But I'm trying to just triple up on vitamin C. I've been drinking juices and emergency. With another Sephora 15 brush, I'm picking up the medium brown in the center and I'm going to start buffing that beneath the lower lash line. Connecting the top. <coughs> Whoa, bless me. <sighs> Connecting those top colors down to the bottom lash line. Next, I'm going in with my new Too Faced Brown Liquid Eyeliner. This is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Easy Glide Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Chocolate. I think it's called Chocolate. The brown one, it is so pretty. It's the perfect brown. I already know I'm going to love this. I love the pen. I love this in black because I find it to be incredibly easy for liquid liner. And I love the idea of a brown because it's a little bit softer, not as harsh as black. And I like that this is a nice medium brown. I'm not gonna say it's light, but it's not as dark as some of them. It's really subtle, but I love the brown. It's a very subtle difference once you get it on the eye, but I just love how easy this pen is. This is so user-friendly, beginner-friendly. We are getting there. Eyes are just about done. As you can see, filled in my eyebrows. I did mascara. I curled my lashes as well. Let me at least show you what I used. So I went in with my beloved Shiseido eyelash curler and then this little E-Doll mascara from Lancome. I've been using this and I actually really like it. It's a great mascara. I always knew it was good, but I had convinced myself that nothing was better than the Tower 28. I'm still glad that I picked up a backup, but I wanna go through some of my other mascaras before I open my new one. And then for the lips, I'm gonna keep it pretty neutral. I'm gonna line them with this Makeup Forever Aqua Lip in 1C, just a nude liner. I actually had my lips plumped the other day. You could maybe tell in my last few videos they were really big and juicy. It's because they were pretty swollen. But now the swelling has completely gone down and I think they look more normal. Just a little bit more full. 
The bruising's completely gone and I think they look really nice. I went to a plastic surgeon's office in Palm Beach area. I will drop the contact down in the description box in case anybody's in South Florida if you're interested. And then for lipstick, I'm gonna use the lipstick I wore in my haul because I received a couple questions. It's one of the Rosso Valentino matte lipsticks in the shade 132A. I believe it's called Go For Ginger. It's just a really pretty nude. And then of course you don't have to use a gloss. I like gloss and my lips are actually feeling a little bit dry right now. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of this Bobbi Brown lip gloss in the shade Free Spirit. It's just a plain nude. but I think it's the perfect match for the lipstick. So it's not gonna change the color too much. But that way my lips won't be so dry. Anytime I travel, I always like to take all of my products. I don't like to go without anything. I like my things. And especially since we drove last week, I packed everything. I packed my red light therapy mask. I had my Laneige overnight sleeping mask, my tretinoin. I did all of my skincare routine and I still ended up with really dry skin. There's just something about traveling. I don't know what it is takes me out of my element and I feel like things always get crazy. I either have terrible breakouts or I get really dry. My chin is really dry and kind of breaking out and then my lips have never felt so dry. And I guess it could also be that I'm not feeling very well. Maybe the sickness has kind of dried everything up, I'm not sure. But I do really like this lip with a little gloss. Makeup for the day is now complete and I must say I am starting to feel a little bit better. I feel a little bit more refreshed, a bit more like myself since this is the first time I've done full glam in a couple days. Overall, I'm really happy with the way the makeup turned out. I think all of the new products that I tried today were really good. I'm a big fan of this Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. I'm not sure it's so much better than the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I would have to take a look at the price and the amount of product. I do really like the pump versus the doe foot wand. I'm not sure if that really justifies the price difference. I want to check out the other shades and I'm really excited to try this a few different ways. I want to see what this looks like when my skin is looking a little bit better. I want to see what this looks like with just a little concealer, maybe a little cream bronzer, cream blush for a light, minimal, no makeup makeup. I think this could be really pretty. Now the Forever Glow Maximizer in shade Rosy. This is really pretty. I'm not sure if it's my favorite blush, my favorite cream blush. It looks really natural on the skin when blended out. It definitely is more of a highlighter than a blush, which is not what I expected. It's pretty. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I think I would have to compare side by side. I want to say the Pinkasm Blush Glow Wand from Charlotte Tilbury is maybe a little bit prettier. Not a regret. I'm glad I bought it, but one of those products that I'm going to have to keep an eye on because it could fade away slowly to the back of the drawer, never to be seen again. I'm not sure how excited I'm going to be to use this on a regular basis, just because when I blended it out on its own, it was a little bit like, eh, it's nice. Not overly anything to be fussed about. I love this luminous blush. This is so pretty. All of the shades are so stunning. Part of me wishes that I'd maybe picked up the peach or the lighter pink or another shade of this versus one of these because this I'm excited about. I know I'm gonna use this. Let's talk about these Prada eyeshadow palettes. I really like them. I don't love the refill situation only because I wish that the refills, instead of just coming in the pretty mint box, I wish they also came in a plastic protector so you could put them in the drawer. It's fine, I'll just keep it in the box. But I also wish that they were magnetic with the refills because that way you would be able to pop one out, pop one in and kind of change them out depending on whatever makeup look you wanted to for the day. The color stories I think are really beautiful. I love that they're more neutral with the pop of color. This one is a very natural light, kind of fresh rosy gold rose palette. 
I think this is really pretty for daytime. This, I guess maybe because of the intensity up here and the gold and the blue, I'll probably use this more for evening looks. Like even though the eyes aren't that dark right now, this is still probably an evening, not a bopping around during the day eye look. I do think this blue is really pretty and if you mixed this with some sort of iridescent shimmer on top, you could duplicate or replicate the blue from the Rivage Chanel eyeshadow palette that sold out. Both palettes are great for summer and both will be great for creating those soft pop of blue mermaid inspired makeup looks. And you can't really go wrong with a nude lip. The Valentino lipstick I think looks really nice with the eyeshadow look keeping it a little bit more neutral. I almost forgot the money mist. I sprayed the money mist in my hair this morning before I styled it. And I think it did a really nice job detangling my hair as I was combing through it. I felt like I needed a little detangler and then I remembered, oh yeah, I have the money mist. So I spritzed a little bit of that in. I didn't use the money mask first. In fact, I used the Orbe Gold Lust shampoo and regular conditioner today, but then I did use the mist and I thought it helped with the detangling process and overall my hair feels really silky. I'm not sure it made a huge difference post blow dry, but it definitely helped detangle the hair. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked hearing my thoughts on all of the new products that I picked up during the savings event. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. Again, I'm excited to know what you're shopping for, what you picked up. Have you had any surprises? Let us know down below in the comment section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.